Did you ever ask yourself why we should care that these guys keep blowing each other away? Uh, really, uh, Rudolph Giuliani, United States Attorney, the mob buster, why should we care if they keep killing each other? Well, we have to care about it because, number one, you know, murder is something that you have to take seriously. And number two, there's another myth that they keep perpetrating, which is they never harm innocent people. Uh, they don't always do it perfectly. They don't always do it effectively. And innocent people have been shot and murdered as a result of their trying to produce mayhem on the street. I mean, you can't shoot people in the middle of, in the middle of Manhattan without creating a terrible risk to innocent human beings. Elliot Ness was the scourge of the mob in the 30s in uh, Chicago. Uh, many of the newspapers, the television stations, are comparing you to him, the, uh, the new untouchable, <laughs> the untouchable of the 80s. Um, I've read the headlines, but seriously, substantively, how badly has the mob been hurt by the successful prosecutions that you brought? It's been hurt, but it certainly hasn't been destroyed by any means. It's been hurt because large numbers of them have gone to prison, and RICO cases, civil RICO cases, racketeering cases, that allow us to take their money and some of their influence over unions and businesses have now been brought against them and there'll be a lot more than that. So I think there's hope for the future, but by no means is the effort uh, over. With so a many lot things, more to be done. With so many things competing for the government's attention, so many different priorities and priorities constantly changing, is it realistic to expect that your office can keep this a priority? Well, I think it has to. I mean, New York has been gravely afflicted by organized crime for generations now. It has to be a priority. It has to be a priority not only of the U.S. Attorney's Office, but of the Department of Justice nationwide. And if we keep the pressure up for five or 10 years, then we can have some real permanent effect. But we can't fool ourselves into thinking that the success that we've had now means that it's, uh, I mean, we've won the battle. Define the, really, the harm caused by the mafia to the national institutions, oh to my God, the government uh, fabric of society. Give it, us an overview. It, um, it convinces large numbers of people that neighborhoods, communities, businesses are being controlled by gangsters and by this other government that murders people at will uh, it, it imposes a tremendous tax, not just monetary, but on, on our moral standing uh, to allow this kind of government to operate, or groups of governments, because there are a lot of these different groups, not just the traditional mafia. What if the Russians were doing what the mob is doing today? They'd be doing a pretty effective job of undermining our society, and unfortunately, these 20, 25, 30 groups are doing a very effective job. Drugs probably uh, illustrates it the most dramatically, but gambling, prostitution, uh, loan sharking, control of labor unions, political influence, all of those things uh, uh, affect us very, very dramatically. Unfortunately, people don't see it as easily as they see the effect of violent crime. Okay. Rudolph Giuliani, United States Attorney for Manhattan, thanks very much for being here. Thank you us. very much, Robert. When we come back, you're going to meet some of the men who dominate the world of organized crime today. So stay with us. We're going to be talking live with this convict. His name is Maddie Trainer. He's in prison in Nassau County, Long Island. Now, Trainer's testimony was supposed to convict his lifelong friend, the mafia leader John Gotti. But at the trial, Trainer double-crossed the prosecutors, and as a result, Gotti walked free. And it should be said that when the 46-year-old Gotti walks, he does so with a kind of expensive elegance. Don't be fooled. It's only skin deep. Although one or two of the hoods occasionally sport a thousand-dollar suit. Most of the top guys look like they'd be more at home playing bocce in a retirement community than playing a role in The Godfather. Incidentally, this guy playing bocce is Vito Genovese, the last real boss of all bosses. Genovese's death in 1969 was the beginning of the end for the original generation of hoodlums. That included cronies of Al Capone, like Chicago's Tony Big Tuna Accardo, who after five decades as a mug, is now in his 80s. After telling this Senate committee he never ordered anybody murdered, the senators asked Mr. Ricardo about his income. You've never cheated on your income tax? No, sir. What did you say on your tax return when you turned it in? What did you give as the source of your income? I think my tax lawyer put down miscellaneous. Miscellaneous? Yes. Fortune magazine's cover boy, Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, is 75. Oh.